Hello and welcome to this week's In Conclusion. I'm Kijan Haynes. Let's get right into our top stories for the week. This time, well, not chosen by you. Because you see, what I thought was the biggest story of the week, and not just because I worked on it, Parliament documents reveal that the Attorney General's office spent nearly $350 million on legal fees in four years. One loyal loan making as much as $15 million, all out of taxpayer money. And this led former AG John Jeremy to call it obscene. He says in his day, the budget was only $34 million dollars a year. But who cares? That story went nowhere this week. This week's top stories, as chosen by you, were all about vulgarity on the internet. You know, technology is supposed to make our lives easier, and that's unless you use it foolishly, and then it can make your life a living hell. And to the naked firefighter. The Express covered the story as just another case of getting caught with your pants down, literally. But the Trinidad Guardian's version is that the officer allegedly assaulted a former female colleague and exposed himself. The article goes on to say that there are photos of the alleged assault showing the officer attacking the female victim and that she was forced to leave and take, uh, take sick leave and resign. And now he's on paid sick leave. So some people say that sexism is still very much alive. Then this story had people up in arms. On Sunday, the UNC executive and now former member of the CDA, Jai Lida Darsing, broke every social media rule by calling another member of a private Facebook group well, there should be a whole show about whether or not we should be using that word on television. But uh, Lita Dar Singh was promptly fired for, or rather asked to resign by Dr. Bo Tuari, under whose ministry, the planning ministry, oversees the CDA. Now, he's since apologized for his lapse in judgment, and now the Ministry of Housing is considering repossessing his HTC house. Now, on the political platform, things got ridiculous again. The PNM political leader comes on the platform and says, well, by now you know what he says. But I'll quote my friend Pauline Phillip, who said, when you consider that only a small percentage of those registered to vote actually attends political meetings, the media has a very important role to play on whether or not the Bacchanal story becomes the story. So here's how TV6 treated with what Dr. Rowley said. She could drink this. She could drink that. She could back on the dog because we ignore she cat. And that was it. No bells, no whistles. He said it, whatever, moving on. Now, CNC3, if I recall correctly, didn't even mention it in their newscast the next night. But C News' Sherilyn Lewis took the story, found a different angle, and brought it forward. And while his statements were well received by the crowd, Chair of the Political Code of Ethics Committee, Dr. Bishnu Raghunath, says, Dr. Rowley is fully aware that they go against the Code of Ethics of the Committee. He says as a signatory of the Code of Ethics document, Dr. Rowley could face possible sanctions for his statements. And if you forgot that the politicians even signed the Code of Ethics, you're not alone, because I did too, and I actually covered this story last year. It isn't bound by law, but they hope it will at least be enforced by the public. The Ethics Code bans politicians from using language which could incite violence. They can't make false or defamatory statements about each other or any members of the public, and they can't pay anyone to join their political party or to vote for them. I really appeal here today to all my colleagues and all the other political parties that we stand by this code of conduct. Now, if we're talking defamation of character, can we talk about these ads of puppets depicting Dr. Rowley? Now, so far, no one's actually said anything about them. There's have been no coverage. They first appeared on the UNC's Monday Night Forum. Now, of course, in the first one, you have Dr. Rowley's puppet. Uh, he can't conduct a conversation without getting distracted, always running off to whine on a girl. That is good to hear. Is he good in school? Because I was a bit of a scholar myself. And I Excuse me. Now, I don't want to point out that on one hand, there are complaints that Dr. Rowley was disrespectful to women, namely the Prime Minister, but now they're also incessantly lampooning a 17-year-old girl. So does this also fall under the violation of the Code of Ethics? Also, who's behind the Citizens for a Better TNT? Do they get away from the code of ethics because they're not actually a political party? So these stories, these are all stories that we could work on for next week. Now, to wrap it up, Prakash Ramada said this on Thursday night at his meeting. Because of the propaganda of the last several years, many of our brothers and sisters have been blinded and with the best of intention, misled by misrepresentation. 
That is why we have come to the nation, our brothers and sisters and the Prime Minister on their Monday night forum and we, the COP, on a Thursday to speak directly with you. Not to go through the filter of a media that distorts a lot of the headlines. It doesn't tell the truth about the good news as Lauren has reminded us. We must speak to you as brothers and sisters, friend to friend, so that you will know when we speak it, it is true. So we're not going to really respond to that, but just want to say the media actually didn't interrupt your speech, Mr. Ramada, for a half hour while making an entrance on Monday night. We're going to take a break and be right back. All right, welcome back. So Dr. Rowley's controversial expression may have had its origin in a verse typically used by Tobago speech bands. It goes, tit for tat and butter for fat, who killed my dog, go licking the cat. Drag your bow, Mr. Fiddler. But now, has Dr. Rowley gone too far? Is it all political pickong? So here to discuss the sort of impact Dr. Rowley's comments might have is someone who knows all about political pickong, express columnist and satirist Kevin Baldiosing and Fane Richards filling in last minute because we had a cancellation. So thank you very much for, for coming in. So Kevin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with you. So is this political pickong or is, are they picking some sort of nonsense? What, what is happening here? It's political pickong. The um, argument the UNC and their supporters are taking is that it's an insult to all women mm -hmm. rather than just the Prime Minister itself. But uh, I am not sure that is so because when Pekong is directed at a particular politician, whether it's Anna Ram Logan or Anna Roberts and so on, how come it's not an insult to all men? So is it that? So how should the media be treating this story? Should we just completely ignore it? Because it's, it's kind of taken a life of its own and it's become the story. Yeah, it's become the story, not because the media decided that really. Um, there are three criteria when we choose how to run the story. Is it informative? Is it important? Is it interesting? Mm -hmm. It could be interesting without being either informative or important. It may just be amusing. Dr. Rowley is not a particularly good joke maker compared to let's say Mr. Pandey, even Mr. Manning. Um, so I think TV6 actually had the best response. You put it in a kind of trivial little item, and you, know, you note it and move on. It is what it is. But the UNC saw an opportunity here, here because their political strategy um, is to paint Dr. Rowley and by extension the PNM as immoral. Mm -hmm. On the PNM side, if you listen to their um, supporters, the narrative is that the UNC and that, those people, as they like to say, are evil. I mean, where the evil kind of term comes from. So let me just get Fane in for a second. So Fane, as a, as a woman, were you offended by this? And as a reporter, were you offended by maybe the courage or the, the overcoverage of this issue? As a woman, I wasn't particularly offended, but I think that's because viewing a political meeting, I viewed it through my journalist lens, right. which naturally gets you to see both sides of the fence. I hear the argument that it's a Tobago expression, an idiom, that may be peculiar to that culture. He himself didn't direct or attribute his reference to his Tobago culture, so right. we may be filling in a blank trying to explain something, or people may be filling in the blank for him. So I can hear that it's just a linguistic, off-the-cuff remark. Um, he did manipulated somewhat. He didn't stick to the script of the, the idiom that you the laid out just now. He, he changed some of the phrasing a bit, so it wasn't verbatim. On the other hand, though, I understand that it's Pekong, it's culture, it's something that we do, and as you said, both sides are doing it, and in an election season, people are going to do it at their own convenience and then respond quite sensitively when it is convenient to do so. So, but Kevin, as, as Fane says, we, when it's convenient to do so, but does it mean that just because uh, maybe we might tease men, uh, that we should also be allowed to tease women and take this sort of uh, misogynistic response toward the, the Prime Minister? I thought women wanted equality. <laughs> if so, they do, they have to be equally open to being insulted. And let's make a distinction here between Pekong and Mobilang, eh? mm -hmm. to use our dialect terms properly. Pekong is really witty and you know, as you say, teasing. Mm -hmm. Morvelang is a bit vicious. And Dr. Rowley's unfortunate <laughs> attribute is that a lot of time, if he may be throwing Pekong, it comes across as Morvelang because, you know, I guess of, it's his, of his delivery. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. as Fane said, in, in this case, um, she wasn't particularly offended because the question really comes 
was he really directing it at a woman or was he directing it at a particular person who is the prime minister who happens to be a woman so right so does that mean that the prime minister should should get a break because she's a woman is that is that no definitely not no, I, I'm, I'm glad that you enumerated the way that the various media houses covered it, the different levels of importance or prominence that they attributed, attributed to it the night after it was said. I think with the Say What, for example, it got viewers to not just pass it and give it a passing glance. The Say What, the question by its nature, makes you stop and think, well, what did he just say? And then you start to put your own analysis on whether or not it was appropriate, whether it was said in jest, whether it was just spirit of the moment you get caught up in what you're saying on the platform. There are others like Charlene. What Charlene did was instructive in terms of getting it to uh, Dr. Dr. Ragnar, getting it from the political scientist perspective, and he's also on the, the Code of Conduct, the Code of Ethics Committee. So it, it, the treatment, I think... We go, we're going to go through this battle for this entire election as we do for, for every election, which is what do you give prominence to? And then if you decide you're giving prominence to something more issues-based as opposed to an off-the-cuff remark that could have just been Pekong, right. may not have been maliciously intended, are you going to have to now change the narrative depending on reaction? But see, that's, this is, I mean, I'm going to throw my, my two cents in here, but I think that absolutely uh, our coverage, and it's not just because it's ours, I will give credit where it's due, but it was not worth a, a second glance. And there were conversations. I had many conversations with journalists about, should we rule with this? Should we not rule with it? And many people said, guys, is this really important? He's talking about a dog and a cat, and why are we doing this? But now that it's become the story, mm -hmm. how do we rein that back in? Or should we even rein it back in and just let it go where, where it goes? It will die, because inherently it, it, it is unimportant. And in this case, the UNC has um, succeeded in manipulating us in the media, right? It became right. a narrative. They, they succeeded very well. We have to go with the story because now, right. now it's, it's now interesting, story, it's important. Yes. And now people it, are talking about it. Yes. And people are talking about it more than other stories that we thought that they would know. And the list about. you gave were, as you said, really far more important and informative stories. But <laughs> this one became more interesting because of sex. Right. That's what it boils down to. And, um, but sex, sex will sex. die. <laughs> well, I think all of that being said, though, there's a, there's a measure of political correctness that we probably don't have on our platforms that you might more customarily find, for example, in an American political landscape. Right. We're not very good at being PC. In an election, I think there has to be some kind of temperament or tempering of how far you want to go if you're going to appeal to, to people as their prospective leader. And then we in the media now need to interpret how offensive was this? Who's going to find this offensive? Who's right. going to, to take it and run with it in a more um, opportunistic direction? So engaging amongst ourselves, was this worth a story? Was it just worth a say what? I, you have to find, figure out in your mind who is going to find this of interest, who's going to find this relevant to how they feel, how they perceive themselves, and how they feel this particular potential leader is is perceiving them. But it, what's inter interesting as well is that we talk about this code of ethics that, they, that the politicians signed and sanctions, and I don't remember there being any sanctions uh, when no, I... No, um, it was the, the, the committee said so, there are no sanctions. Yeah, there's the nothing... It's, it's supposed it's to be... It's moral we, suasion, really. Yeah, it's we are the ones who are supposed to sanction them, I guess, or give them a... The, the public in general is this, uh, supposed to say, you well, guys signed this and... Yeah, the sanction will be when the if, if the committee decides that this was a breach, that therefore impacts on the public image of the particular politician. That's the sanction, and really and truly, what better sanction can you want than a politician's public image being damaged? So. And so, no, but now that they, they, it's gone all the way to ads, they've created uh, ads mm -hmm. that are running, and they did this within 24 hours. <laughs> Is there any stopping it? Is it now that we can say, well, all right? You've done your part. Now we can go back to, to our part. Yeah, we, it, we can, it we will can... die. Like I said, because the only stories that, that keep legs are those which have the other two elements of being informative and being important. When something is merely interesting, the interesting it's a novelty. And it has, you know, the nine-day wonder. That's a nine-day wonder. It will be a three-day wonder. By two days from now, right, that conversation ends and something else is going to die. Something else will come up. So next, the next political meeting... Do we actually, can we put our feet down and say, you know what, this is just a uh, movela, mm -hmm. or and we want to focus on, let's say, falling oil prices. It's not sexy, but it's important. I go through that struggle every time. 
every time you have to deal with a platform speech, there are some pertinent things that were said on relevant issues which uh, you know, affect national well-being and the future of the country and the economy and so on. And then you have the other stuff that you say, if I leave this out, is it going to be exactly what, what would have happened over the course of the week? It starts as a say what and then it ends up as something as bigger than that. And did you make a, a bad judgment call? And then you also have that, that, that problem of with everybody else, everybody else is doing it. And then you're like, oh right, gosh. so that no, competitive we, no, factor is no, not weighing on your mind, right? The, the you have to find a way to, to decide that certain things will get more weight. It, for example, the, the length of time in a newscast that we're going to give one item over the other, or the length of, of column inches in a newspaper, you're going to give one over the other. Maybe it's not a situation where you have to decide you're going to leave out one in favor of the other. Different people will find different things interesting or offensive, as the case may be. And they have a right to know what is being said because we're probably some of the few people who are listening to the entire yeah, thing. The entire or, and thing. especially That's when true. it's not broadcast, we're one of the few people there. So we have to find a way to give prominence to things that are more crucial to national welfare and well-being, but also let people know what other things are being said because that may, that may be the make or break factor for, for a voter. We don't know what every voter is going to use to determine if they haven't decided already who they're going to vote for. Yeah, but the problem is that when they, we, are, we are covering um, campaign speeches, they have crafted their speeches um, to try and get us in the media mm -hmm. to go with a particular angle and story. And the fact is that a lot of the time, that particular angle or story may not be you know, the important issues or, or practices and so on. So, in a sense, when we decide to cover the interesting or the juicy right. parts, if you want, um, that is because of what comes out of what is presented to us. If we have to do the other things, then we, then we have to work harder. If we do the other practice, we can't just report what they say. Right, you have to go on and We have to go into the background and, and make exactly. sure we get it Which is interesting <laughs> for, the, um, for the viewer. So that is the problem we face, really. We, we, we're combating what they are presenting to us and what they want us to basically give them PR and how do we manipulate that? They say what as a little feature is nice because sometimes the very thing that they want us to put as the focus, we can satirize it. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Great conversation. All right. So we're going to take a break and be right back with more. This is In Conclusion. with us. Now, before this whole rowdy debacle, tonight's show was supposed to be all dedicated to radio. So I spent some time on Thursday with the number one radio show on the number one radio station in the country. Make up or break up on Boom Champions 94.1. Check it out. In here, as you mentioned, what's up a while ago with me and pictures. Um, this person is asking, Smooth, I need your advice on, on this particular issue. Um, what's up, Facebook? You know, social media in the whole. Um, She's in a relationship with this guy four years now. And not a day out of the four years, this guy took a picture and, 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 and put it up on Instagram, posted it up on Instagram, not a WhatsApp profile, not a Facebook, nothing. Even on Facebook, his relationship status, it's, it's, um, it's just blank. Because you know you can put in a relationship with somebody, you can put single, complicated, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's just blank and not even a pick. After four years, yeah. I find that fish. Not, not even one picture. I find that fish. Huh? What do you think that means? He's um, playing the field? Out there. Yeah, he's playing the field. Out there. He doesn't know he's in a relationship. You I mean, not even a picture. Um, I must look up Kevin Baker. A um, couple years ago, um, Baker used to do this shit. And um, he had two pictures. Eyes on you and make up a breakup. And, you know, Baker moved on to the morning show. He's now on the evening drive. And um, I was calling for the slot. And me just being, you know, crazy, hype, wild. And he said, you know what, I'm going to take this program and blow it up, make it even bigger. And one night, Carrie and myself, we just decided, yo, we're going to open up the phone lines and people call with the issues and stuff like that. And it happened one night. And that was it. Make up a break up. So it's a very organic, organic sort of thing. And yeah. how, long, how long ago was that? And how was it grown in the time that you've been doing this? Uh, that was like about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And since then, um, every single survey has been the number one show, 69. Um, this year around, it's, it's different. Um, the numbers peaked crazy. 
you know. Um, and we just thankful for the love and the support from the listeners every single day. People who look at us on the live stream all over the world, make up a breakup. Myself, Smooth, DJ Carry, Heartless Chris, and now we have Whitney Husbands. You know, we decided to put in a woman, a woman in the mix to get that ladies' perspective because there's always men on the show. And you know, ladies will always call and say, well, thank you, I don't have So now, ladies, Whitney defending all the city fullest on the make up a breakup. I'm going to talk to Whitney there. So, Whitney, what, what do you think you bring to the show? Um, well, as Smooth said before, I'll bring the woman's perspective, but I'll still keep it real at the end of the day. If a man is wrong, he will still be wrong. But if he's right, I'll give him his kudos. But we have to make sure that we keep the show 100% all the time, and that's what we bring to the table. And so how much of this is, you all give advice, but uh, any time that you all really will dr drop back and say, nah, boy, we can't help you, you need no, professional help. No, 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 we will, we will get, you will find help for the person. Sometimes we will call them off here, like we have numbers here as we speak, that people will leave their numbers and we will call and find out what is the situation. Um, because we deal with a lot of serious matters, the same way we deal with the funny ones as well. But when it's very serious, we make sure and find help or seek help for the person to make sure that, you know, they really get better and be a better person at the end of the day because we are all human, we all make mistakes and we all go through certain things in our lives. But you're not exactly trained, you all ever thought about going out and getting like trained or doing a psychology degree or anything like that? Or? Um, well, the team, you know, we've been talking about it and it's going to happen very soon because at the end of the day, people feel comfortable, you know, talking to us. I mean, just say if we have that, then why not do it? And a lot of people, even though we're not qualified just yet, people say, you know, we give good advice. You know, and like what they were saying, sometimes, you know, you get a phone call and you realize, okay, this person needs more than just my advice. They need professional help. And we actually follow through and make sure that person is okay. Chris, so much of this is, your, you know, you find your, your personal experience comes into the advice that you give. Oh, well, boy, hmm. being, on, being on radio for like, this is, this is 18 years. I have done shows um, in the past, I've done like yeah, this explosion and another little shows that, that was on 94. Um, so, and man, some of the experiences, well, you would hear is personal stuff that I may have encountered in the past. Um, in terms of the, 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 the getting the name Heartless Chris, um, people ask me, when they meet me, are you really heartless? Um, no, not really. But I just do like, you know, there are certain situations that, you know, I could connect with. I may come across that way. But, you know. Smooth. So, have, let me talk about the, the relationship you all have together. Uh, uh, you all had a little, little tat, 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 a little tiff just now. But no, 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 no. You know, the banter, you know. At the end of the day, it's a talk show. Whitney might say something off, I might say something off, and we always at it. But at the end of the day, you know what you hear on the radio? Yeah, sometimes Whitney might get vexed, I might get vexed, Chris might say something off, and it's like, Daddy, you out of time and all. But it's not like, you know, I go with vex, or Chris is upset and tomorrow you're not coming to work. At the end of the day, we talk it out and we laugh it off, you know? So it's all good. Love in the house. Whitney, if anybody has come up to you in the street and ask you for advice in the same way that they would on oh, the yeah, 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 <laughs> they do. And um, sometimes the comments that they will make, in the studio because even though like smooth will say that we in the studio and it's the act no sometimes it will get intense because we're real we're keeping it real 100 sometimes i will tell stuff on him i saw that yeah, yeah. <laughs> he will collect some stuff but that is what makes the show so unique it's real we're not playing it is us it's smooth you see in Chris, you see in Carrie, and of course myself, we bring in everything to the table. And sometimes people won't like it because it's taboo for most, and another custom here, and things so raw and real in your face. But that's what makes the show so perfect, and it will never be forgotten. Everyone will remember this because you get an avenue to vent. No one has avenues to vent. You don't. You may not have people. And as Smooth said, we are com They are comfortable enough to tell us their business. And sometimes we do the same because we feel comfortable with our listeners. The same way they feel comfortable with us. All right. Thanks very much, y'all. All right. So thanks very much uh, to the Makeup or Breakup team. Let's uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back to wrap. So before we end, I just want to say something. So when you do this job, you interact with all sorts of people in all sorts of ways, especially on social media nowadays. And sometimes we become friends with them and uh, without ever having met them. Um, Mark De Silva was uh, one of our Facebook friends who followed almost every media personality on Twitter. 
He gave us honest feedback about our stories and some tips from time to time. It's just a real new sound. Uh, you may remember there was a fire in East Port of Spain last week. His house was destroyed. And what we're hearing is that he was ill and his medicine was destroyed in the fire. He passed away on Thursday night. So we dedicate this episode to you, Mark. So sorry to end on such a sad note, but it had to be said. We miss him already. Okay, so reruns of In Conclusion are on Tuesday mornings at 9. I will see you next week, Saturday at 7.30, right after the TV6 Weekend News. A brand new week of news begins right now.